Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my world of modeling and my workbench. Dan here as always, and in this video we're going to be looking at some custom built structures that I've built for my layout. Um, as you guys know, I'm building a model road out in my garage right now. It's under construction, and I'm in the process of putting things together and uh, doing some scenery right now, and it's coming along pretty well. Um, hopefully you, most of you guys have seen my layout update since then. Uh, I've been able to basically get all the electrical done out there and things are going really well. I'm very, very happy with the progress so far. And I'm actually in the process of uh, going ahead and doing some experimentation with scenery. I'm in the process of detailing up some scenes and just seeing the final picture of what I need to do to get everything ready. Uh, a big part of this uh, model Railroad obviously is prototype structures. The particular location I'm modeling is Fostoria, Ohio in the current day present era. Uh, kind of 2015-ish era so I can run a lot of leasers up to 2020. Uh, kind of in that era and I might even have some flashback uh, eras where I can kind of go to early CSX, uh, Union Pacific stuff where I can run a lot of old leasers and stuff like that. I uh, kind of have that variety of power. But anyway this video again is Focusing on the structures, this is going to be a key aspect to this model road because in this town of Fostoria, Ohio, I'm modeling two specific locations. I'm modeling the Fostoria south side where the CNO yard is. I am modeling the BNO east end, which is where a little rail yard is, and then the siding. The BNO two track main runs through there, obviously CSX now. And there are some prototype structures. There's a radio tower. There's a really cool three track crossing that I'm modeling right now. And all the structures that I'm going to be showing in this video are part of that scene. They're all uh, really interesting structures. The main building is a Verizon tower uh, included with a cell tower as well. There's a substation and then there's some surrounding little sheds, there's some housing, there's some garages, a house, a few things like that. And then of course all the other little details like relay, cab you know, relay cabinet signals, things like that. That is all there as well. So I've had to go in and model all this. And the most annoying thing about this process is that a lot of these structures and things like that obviously aren't available and it comes down to me having to scratch build them. And I didn't get any, uh, unfortunately, any videos of me scratch building any of these structures. This is just going to be a show over of what I've built for my model road and I'll kind of talk about the real prototypes and how I basically went about modeling these things. So we'll go ahead and get the camera set up to my workbench and we'll go into detail on how I built all the structures that you're going to see for this uh, model road and for this video. So here we are looking at the real life BNO East End of Fostoria, Ohio. And this is where I'm actually starting off the uh, scenic part of my model road build. I'm doing this area because this obviously has the railroad crossing, it has the signals, the structures, and a lot of cool scenery that I want to jump right into. Uh, basically my goal here is I'm trying to create a scene where I can be able to start running trains on uh, and be able to actually start enjoying it. I've been spending you know the last two years working on this project I want to be able to start running some trains. I'm at the ability now where my model road is functional and I can actually run trains so I want to be able to have a little scenic area where I can start running stuff, make some videos, take pictures and things like that and really just be able to start enjoying it and you know uh, just kind of sit on for a little while, decide if I want to change some stuff, that kind of thing. So this is big, basically my big goal right now in the next, you know, maybe month or so, I want to be able to have just this entire area alone. And on my model road, this takes up the uh, entirety of two whole modules, including a large curve section. But we're focusing on the structures here because as we look in the real, uh, real location here, we have the double track BNO main. With the uh, east siding is up here just past the signal bridge. Uh, we have the structures, which is going to be the primary focus of this uh, chat here. This scene here has these structures, and because of the way I built my bench work, these have to be modeled to be able to fit in the backdrop. I can't avoid this no matter what I do. And so when I approached this project, I completely overlooked the structures. I just jumped right into laying the track, and then I got to the structures, and I really had to make a big decision on how I wanted to approach building these. And so I decided to use styrene to construct everything. I decided not to 3D print stuff. I just scratch built everything and I used some other commercial parts. But as you can see, we have the main Verizon shack here, the main building uh, with the AC units on the top. It's got some really cool HVAC units. It's got some little details, a chain link fence around it. It's got these light poles, uh, pretty typical other scenery around that. But it's a big part of this little yard area because it's right there. We also have the large Verizon cell tower. This was built in the 80s, I believe, and it's been in Fostoria for many years now. Uh, out of this shot there is another building over here and in the next picture I'll show you that but as you can see this is the main structure that I am going 
basically that I had to scratch build is what I'm trying to say. And then the yard tower here, which again is something I had to build and I wasn't expecting I was going to have to, but I did, and I'll show that to you in a second. Here we're looking at all the structures now. We have the large three-bay garage. This is where they store utility trucks, equipment, other little things like that. And as you can see, it's in very close proximity with the actual main Verizon shack here, the large hub building, and then the actual radio transmitter tower. And again, these are all three of the key structures for the particular scene I'm modeling, and so this is what I started off with. Uh, there's also another little shack that's just behind this structure on the east side of this building. Right now we're looking eastward towards these structures, and on the other side of this building there's a tiny little garage-like shack, which I also scratch built. So now that you guys have an idea of the structures that are on this little location that I'm modeling, let's look at the workbench to see the structures that I was able to customize, kitbash, and scratch build for this. Starting with the first and most important structure, this is the one I built the first as well. We have the Verizon building here. This is what's connected to the actual radio tower. Uh, this is a very interesting and unique structure. And for this one, I scratch built it. This is not a kit. Uh, it's a combination of scratch built parts, a lot of scratch made details, some photo etch parts, plastic parts, brass parts. Uh, mostly styrene though, and then I also did use some commercially available parts uh, like AC units, railings and stuff for example. Uh, some other little parts that we'll get to in a second. Uh, but the main structure itself is uh, not quite 100% accurate. It's a close representation of what's supposed to be there. Mainly it's very compressed to fit the small space that I have for it. Uh, it's one of those awkward situations where uh, the real thing's too large to fit in the small space, but the small space itself is still large enough to not look right without a structure being there. So I use selective compression to basically model the structure and shrink it down and compress it to a manageable size where it'll fit perfectly uh, in the little space I have provided for it, and it'll look realistic still. So starting with the actual construction, I just started with the 040 inch piece of styrene for the base, so a large rectangular base, and then I built up the sides using plastruct bit, uh, basically brick pattern, I believe 030 inch styrene sheet. You can see it's a really nice large cinder block pattern, just like the real structure, which is all cinder block and it's finished with plaster and then it's got uh, gutters and things like that added to it. Um, so I did the sides, I built all these, and then I did awnings, I added the little lights here, I added the vents, these are from a Walther's kit, on the, well, what would be the east side of the building, we have another vent, these black squares again are made from styrene, these represent the lights that are supposed to be there, eventually I may add LEDs to this, I'm not sure, uh, it's just a very simple styrene construction, if I wanted to add lights to it, all I have to do is cut the floor out, insert some LEDs, and I'm good to go. Uh, I added these little bits of channeling for the gutters. I painted those according to what they look like on the real building. On the roof, the roof was pretty interesting, and we'll get to that in a second, but I added these AC units and stuff like that. I have some uh, chimney pipes, things like that, these cool railings. Uh, I have a couple doors here and there. On the back, it's pretty basic just because I don't have uh, pictures or anything of what the back of the structure looks like, but being that it's up against some wooded areas, I doubt there's much here. There might be a door, but other than that, again, it's very compressed. There would be another extension of the building out about this far in real life, but again, because of compression, I've made it a little bit smaller than that. On this side of the building, the most uh, basically the most noticeable corner of the building, uh, if you were to stand on the model road and look at it, would be this end. So you have, again, all of the detailing. I added the gutters and things like that from Styrene Channel. Uh, this little piece will be to add another extension. There's basically a cable extension that runs from the corner of the building to the cell tower, which would be right here. So I will install this piece later on. Uh, I don't have it on camera to show it to you, but it's just basically a piece of fabricated metal sheet with some pipes that I added, which I made from Styrene, which is pretty cool. Um, these AC units on the top are Walther's parts. These are large industrial AC units that I did some customization to. And then again we come around to the front of the building with the awning and uh, all the nice details there. On the roof, looking again at some of the nicer details, we have the little uh, membrane covering for the top portion of the roof here. I forget what this material is called. 
but it's just basically like a wrap that you put over the brick uh, and it just basically runs the length of the building. Uh, I used gravel, Woodland Scenics gravel, to do the base of the roof uh, because on the real building it's a gravel, a pea gravel roof. Uh, common on older buildings like this, kind of from the 90s, mid 2000s, a lot of buildings are still using this. I don't know if it's as common as uh, roof treatment nowadays, but uh, in this building it has that. So I added that and then I proceeded to build some Walther's AC units, uh, which aren't exact matches to what's there in the real building, but they're pretty close. I added my own little roof cover details because they have these weird roof style panels. I guess they're rain guards, uh, and you can see that they have little antennas on them, which I installed again. And then this one's a more simplified AC unit here. There is also another AC unit on the back corner. Uh, here you can see I added some photo etched uh, railings to the top portion of the roof. Again, this is on the real structure and I made these using Alcom Scale Models photo etch railings. They're for ships, but in this case they worked really well HO scale wise for this building. Again on the back portion looking at the roof you can see there's nothing too crazy. I got some of the little styrene guards, uh, the rain gutters, things like that. The little bits of sealant that I added. Just little highlight details to make it look uh, a little bit more realistic. And again you can see that really nice pea gravel roof here. I got a little chimney pipe, you know, not uh, too crazy. You can see again the really nicely done photo etch uh, little guards there and then the large AC unit there. Uh, so overall that's that structure. That looks really good. I'm pretty happy with that one. And now for one of the most interesting and unique structures I've ever actually built and like another key feature for this layout is the Verizon cell tower itself. This is something I didn't expect I was going to end up having to make but because of the space and me not planning this properly I realized as I was building the dam model railroad that I was going to have to have this structure because of where it was positioned. It was right next to that shack it was right next to the garage basically positioned so it's all very compressed together and I realized right then and there that I had to build this thing now the big problem is there's no kits for these kinds of towers there's no way you can just do this I knew right away that I was gonna to have to scratch build it and I was really dreading this project because as you can see this is some pretty complex work here um, and I had to do a lot of planning and I had to really stew on this and think about it for one thing I didn't know how I was gonna build this complex structural shape uh, or where I was going to be able to space it because obviously I have a small workbench. This was a real real big challenge uh, literally to try to do this. What I figured out to do was to just try to build a mock-up and see if I could maybe make something that looked reasonable and that's really what I went off with. I didn't have any plans to uh, commit to an actual master structure really. I even considered maybe getting one 3D printed and maybe just making a scale replica and then using that, taking pictures of it and then trying to redesign it in some kind of CAD program and 3D printing it which would have obviously taken insane amounts of time and then forever to get it actually printed and then it would have probably been very expensive so in the end I'm kind of glad I stuck with the scratch building option but basically uh, Again, I was very, very undetermined to build this. I wasn't looking forward to it. So I just basically uh, decided to just try to build a mock-up structure. What I ended up doing was I got some skewers, the kind of skewers you use for kebabs, and they're all wooden. So basically what I did was I laid them out on a pattern on my workbench standing straight up. I cut them um, roughly about every six inches, I would say. Uh, this structure, by the way, is two feet tall exactly two feet. I completely built it that way so it's pretty tall here. Uh, so every six inches <clears throat> I basically cut skewers to size and then built them up at an angle which took a lot of time and then as I built each individual section I used styrene strips to basically make the framework of the actual structure. As I was doing that, I was adding the other little braces and ribs and everything else, and I built one section at a time, and then as I was going, I just made each section smaller, because as this tower goes up, it gets thinner and thinner and thinner, as you can see, the profile changes. So I was having to be very careful as I was doing this, and again, I was only building this as a mock-up structure. And as I was going, it started actually working pretty well, and I was like, well, hey, this is actually not looking too bad. So I ended up committing to it more and more, and it ended up basically spending two weeks uh, hand-cutting each individual piece of styrene for this thing and building up all the individual little bits and bits uh, for this thing, and I ended up basically having a completed structure. 
All right, we're zoomed in here for a little bit closer look at some of the details now. Basically, continuing on where I left off from the last clip, uh, after I had the main structure completed, I went back in and decided to go ahead and try to start detailing this thing. So I went to my hobby shop up at Toledo, and I got some little detail parts, I got some styrene rods, I got tons of styrene bits and bobs, little structural pieces like these railings, I got the ladder there, the man, uh, man ladder, I got the large framework there, I got the wire rigging done up with some styrene structural shapes, that took a lot of time. Uh, once I got all these little pieces installed on the main tower assembly, then it was time to figure out how to paint this thing, and basically what I did uh, there was no easy way to mask this thing or work around it, and I figured because the real structure is old and it's very beat up, I could get away with doing some rough painting. So what I ended up doing was I primed the entire tower assembly with Tamiya White Fine Surface Primer, and then every single space apart here, you can see the white and red contrast, I hand painted the base structure and then these little spaces in between the warning orange color to alert aircraft. Uh, obviously because this is a large structure and I hand painted this with a custom mixed acrylic color and I hand painted all this in between each individual section and this took a long time this took a whole day just to paint once I got all that done I wasn't of course looking forward to weathering it and then I figured out how I could do this and basically what I did was I again pulled out my Tamiya fine surface primer and I did a light dusting of white over the entire structure to blend in the red a little bit better because in real life the real structure is very very faded it's very old like I said this was built in probably uh, late 80s I believe um, and so I wanted it to look pretty faded so I went in and I did all the fading with a spray can. Uh, again, the weathering itself is pretty minimal, but you get the uh, basic gist of what it's supposed to look like when you look at this. It looks like an old vintage self tower, and that's exactly what I was trying to accomplish with the look. Uh, as we look at the base of the structure, it's uh, pretty simple. This area here, again, has a large bar that will be running into the main portion of the structure where all the cables will run up to this little piece, and then I'll basically glue that section on and then connect it to the superstructure when it's done. Uh, but that'll come when the actual structure is installed. Here you can see the base of the styrene skewers, and they're nice because they have those points, so I can stick it right down the foam. These little bits here at the bottom are the concrete bases. As you can see, one is missing, and that's because it's actually still on the layout, stuck in the foam. So I, uh, I forgot to bring that in here uh, when I brought the structure in for show and tell. Uh, but these are just, again, some styrene pieces I drilled out, and then I glued to the base. And again, they're in there in a way so that they basically are stops for where... Uh, the structure needs to go in deep enough in the foam, but then they have the little points at the bottom so that they'll stick in the foam nicely. Uh, so you can see again those nice little details I added in there. Uh, overall, again, it's a very massive structure. Uh, the one thing I did not do was add the large antennas and stuff to the top. Uh, the top would go on for another couple stacks, and as you can see, I decided not to add that just yet. I'll probably end up building the other half of it later when I actually can figure out how I want to do the antennas and stuff, because uh, they're pretty complicated, and I'm not sure how to do them, but they're basically large uh, cylindrical-shaped cones uh, that collect the radio frequency, and then all that's, of course, uh, collected in... Um, you know, I'm not an expert on radio towers, I just know the basics of them, so I have no idea how to build those. And unless I can either get them 3D printed or figure another way to scratch build them, that top portion is going to wait. It's just going to be this uh, main structure uh, for now. Uh, but that's the main cell tower, and again, a very unique structure for this layout. And to finish the section of the video here, I got these three structures that will be going again on the Bieno East End, and these are just some backfill structures. Uh, this main garage portion is for a house that's located right beside the tracks, right at the crossing that I'm building, so this was another ideal structure I had to have. And again, I just scratch build this with some structural, uh, some structural shape plastic, stuff like that. I built the custom garage door here. It actually is slightly open, so when you look at it, you can actually kind of see inside the garage. This is pretty cool, and you can see that siding. Uh, it's a little bit weathered. The real structure is pretty weathered. Again, you've got a nicely faded roof. Uh, corrugated metal roof. You got the little antenna there for the electrical conduit. Uh, I got a little garage. This will be getting paired with it. This is a Walters kit. You can see I just left the little door open. This is advertised as HO scale, but it's pretty damn small, so it's just going to be a small little accessory structure that'll go with this one. And then this is another little shack that's located just a little uh, small distance away from this shed. Uh, on the west end of my model road, this is where this will be positioned. It's just another uh, basic barn type shack. 
uh, metal construction, metal siding, an open garage door. You got the little antennas uh, and the conduit and everything else running for the electrical line. You got the little uh, electrical box there, the door. Uh, the custom done roof with again the corrugated plastic sheets which I really like to work with you can see they always look really good and then again this building has some minimal weathering uh, it's not too crazy I think what will happen is as I get these installed on the layout I'll weather them a little bit with an airbrush and some pestles and that should complete them but again they're uh, just being modeled as how they appear in real life uh, that's not all the structures that are in this uh, area alone. There are some other houses and stuff, but because of compression and the space, I don't have room to fit them. Uh, there is one more structure, and it is an actual house, a two-story house and a garage that I will be installing. It uh, will be a Walther's kit. I haven't actually gotten it in the mill yet, but that will be the only other structure that I have yet to build. Other than that, that's basically all the structures on the BNO section. Now I have one large structure to show you guys for the CNO yard section that I talked about a while back in another video and I'll go ahead and show that for you real quick. Alright so now there will only be two real structures that will be on the CNO side of my uh, rail yard on the opposite end of the model road and I've basically built these. These are actually the first structures that I actually built. Uh, is the CNO yard office located in Fostoria, Ohio again right at the edge of the CSX CNO yard this structure here is really unique and the, sh the way it was built in the shape that it is apparently this is an old freight building and at some point in time this was actually moved and uh, relocated in the yard or, uh, I think is the story on it I'm not sure originally where it was from in town but I believe it was located somewhere else is the story behind this which is pretty interesting uh, so it's an old CNO building, and this was built probably in the 70s, I'd imagine, 70s or 80s. Uh, it's definitely not too much older than that. Um, and I just basically was very familiar with the real structure, and I knew the dimensions and everything like that for the most part by looking at it, because I had been back in that rail yard, obviously, since I had been a kid, hanging out and watching the train switch around cars and stuff. And so I had a pretty good idea of what I needed to build with this, uh, but this was my first real attempt at actually you know scratch building a structure so I was obviously a little uh, nervous getting into it but I found as I went it was actually not too difficult again uh, tried and true method here I just experimented by using a 040 inch large styrene sheet that I basically cut out into this rough shape of this structure here and then I began adding little sections of wall panels and things like that using plastruct uh, panel sheeting here to look like old school wood siding uh, this building is all wood siding and it again has old wood trim and all kinds of cool little details like that that uh, really make it an older structure, a real cool staple for the rail yard. Uh, again, a, sig a signature structure that's a key part of this rail yard too that I'm mulling, so again it had to be modeled. So after I built the sides, then I added all the styrene trim. It's again all hand cut individually pieced together and then uh, painted. This was a lot of work. Uh, it really was. And then of course I added again all the little trim. I added uh, custom windows with the, some slight interior detailing. Here on this end you got the conduits running to the top. You got the little wire coming into the receptacle and the insulator uh, from the electrical box. And again this will be a junction where a cable will run into the structure once I get all my telephone poles installed and that will run into this and be glued in and it'll look really cool. As we turn the structure around, you can see the really unique uh, corner shape of the actual roof. And this was a real pain in the butt to get this cut. I used O20 inch styrene sheet, which ended up warping a little bit, unfortunately. But it still looks relatively cool. I think it actually looks even cooler because it looks like a, a slightly caved in roof that you see in a lot of these older wooden buildings. So it's actually a little bit more realistic, I think. Um, but I basically had to hand cut each individual panel of this shaped roof and then I individually cut those. Uh, the other interesting thing as I installed these panels and figured out what they looked like and what they needed to be I then took them back off to finalize them. I painted them and then scribed into the paint with a exacto and a straight edge to get the individual little shingles. And I, in a second I'll show you guys what these look like. You can kind of see them here with a little bit of the enhanced weathering but it's kind of hard to see. As we look at the front of the structure, you can see I actually modeled some covered up older windows that used to be here. Uh, these have since been covered, like I said. Uh, there's some minimal weathering, a little bit of fading on the building. Uh, the blue trim is starting to peel quite a bit. There's a lot of paint peeling 
on the front access portion of the building, the little yard office here, uh, there's a little step. You got a little door, another little light, which is optional, easily to be basically easily to re be removed, and you can install like an LED or something like that. That's how I built these kind of structures. I was kind of trying to keep that in mind. That way I could potentially go back and add some lights. And there is just one LED light here in real life on the real structure. So again, it's something I could go back and possibly add. So looking at the south portion of the building, or rather the, uh, what would this be? This would be the west side of the structure. We again have some electrical conduit running there. We have an electrical meter, uh, gas meter. We got some little details, stuff like that all the nice little trim, some paint uh, chipping and stuff like that. We have uh, some pipes for chimneys. I scratch built the little chimneys on the roof which I'll show again in a second. And as we look at the north end of the building we have again a little uh, little cool section with the door, a step, a little electrical uh, cabinet there. We have the overhang for the roof, we have the guttering system there, all the nice trim which is nicely weathered up. And then on this side you can see the cool little corner of the end there. Uh, it's a very uniquely built structure, and again, it was a kind of a challenge, but this really is what helped to get my feet wet in uh, structural kit bashing. And I'm glad I learned this skill because obviously I definitely had to do a lot more of it, case in point, that cell tower I showed. Uh, and just for a fun little clip here, this is just a accessory shed, as I like to call these little accessory buildings. This is just a storage shed for tools and stuff in the yard. This is located near the fuel pad for the locomotives in the yard. But again, it's just basically painted the same color as the main structure itself. Uh, so again, I just spray painted that and then hand painted all the trim. I added the interesting little roof and it's got again a little conduit pipe that I can install my wire from my telephone poles to uh, to supply the electricity which will look really cool. And again, it's just got some minimal weathering, some fine detailing, uh, but it's a cool little accessory structure. Again, it's kind of hard to see and I did weather the roof quite a bit, but you can actually see the hand scribed shingles or what was an attempt at making some old school uh, shingles <laughs> they're not very good but it's a decent little stand into what's really there on the real structure you can see I did that and again that's all hand scribed right into the paint and then I did a final coat of weathering and such over that to blend it out and I think it worked okay I think especially from a distance it looks right it looks realistic and again that's what matters to me is having a structure that looks good and convincing enough you know I could go in here and do a lot more finer detailing with stuff but these are mock-up structures to represent what's there and nothing more but they're still relatively detailed and they're still good and they still look good to the eye and that's again the key point with this building in the rail yard and then having it all scenic up having all the other little details like ice chest figures cars vehicles telephone poles all that stuff combined it'll all look way more realistic uh, again just real quick wrapping up this clip here these again are some scratch built chimneys these were uh, handmade from some styrene tubing and I added the little caps on them uh, interesting little detail that took a long time to do and I'm, I'm definitely glad I don't have to make more of those. Well guys, that's going to pretty much do it for now on all the structures for this layout. Uh, I'm very happy with how these all turned out and hopefully you guys like this little glimpse into my uh, labor of love or my labor of madness. Uh, I don't know what you would refer to it, but I definitely think it's worth it in the end though because I definitely have some really cool unique structures that are all one of a kind and they're hand built for this model railroad. They're all eye view structures as I like to call them uh, and they should work out real well for the model road and of course when the model road is done and you look at these combined with the scenery it'll blow your mind away I'm telling you guys because uh, I'm really putting a lot of detail into this stuff uh, I'm working on the scenery right now like I said out in the garage uh, in the area that I'm going to be installing these structures these will actually be getting installed on the model road tomorrow night so that'll be really cool I'll uh, try to show some more clips of uh, the stuff that I've gotten completed so far down the road uh, but right now I just need to get stuff done I hope you guys understand I really do wish I could show more on the model road as I'm going along but when I get out there to work I only have limited time I really just need to get out there get stuff done get ballast laid get rock laid and it's very time consuming it takes a long time to do that I'm doing static grass out there for a lot of scenes I'm doing uh, hand done weeds uh, all these custom built signs like a railroad crossing like I said that I'm doing it's a lot of work so I'm just trying to get as much as I can done relatively quickly for the hopefully be able to maybe get some trains running out there in the summer and have at least one scene done where I can maybe just start kind of enjoying 
uh, the fruits of my labor for now and you know just take a little break from just relentlessly building stuff and actually just go out there and run some trains for the hell of it you know uh, so again like I said uh, that's gonna wrap it up for now guys I have another video on signals that'll be another unique topic that I want to discuss because Quite frankly, no one's doing modern signals that look relatively good. Uh, BLMA and Atlas have made some, but they don't do modern signal bridges. I've had to go in and scratch build all of my own signal bridges and other signals and dwarves and railroad crossings for this thing. Yeah, I'm not joking. Uh, it's been a nightmare. But that'll be the next video. Uh, so we'll save that for next time. In the meantime, thank you for watching, guys. Subscribe here on YouTube for more content, and stay tuned for more. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.